Okay. <laughs> no, that's, I mean, the guy did uh, do a lot of things. He's just, it, it's, I, honestly, um, you know, like I said, love or hate him, you, people will probably be uh, coding back to things like quoting him probably for the next 50 years. I, oh, most of them. I know, even, I know Scopus had a great, I think you had a great comment dialogue. I mean, uh, I know the person you were arguing with, I, I also could, I also uh, have respect for him. But I know his position. But I mean, there's always going to be people um, that just, jobs can do no right, Apple can do no right, it's, it's whatever. You know, it's, it's, it's almost like, okay, you know, what, what's the point of initiating, initiating the conversation now? Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, well, yeah, that's true, you know, I mean, it's, it's like that with, it's like that with anybody, you know, uh, well, almost anybody. Yeah. <laughs> 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 almost anybody, <but> <laughs> <laughs> Okay, there we go. <laughs> yeah. well, I have the so, rabbit song I, going through. I, I think, I, yeah, I think that I, I, I think, unless something else spurs it, I, I, that's all I can say about jobs, about bidding a dead horse, to be honest. Okay. So I think, what do you think uh, do we want to go any into Apple News, or do we just kind of want to tail off there for this week? No, I mean, you you have got other stuff. You wanted to talk about... Well, what's uh, Apple News right now? Well, I mean, the just the uh, developments with uh, iOS 5 um, and uh, the iPhone 4S. You know, not well, the I iPhone... Get, I knew, I knew. Everybody always asks me, you know, I get always under undercover PMs. That people love rumors from me. I, I don't. I, I, I people follow me from 07 onward. No, I don't do rumors. I don't do that. Man. It's like it, whatever. But I knew for sure there wasn't going to be an iPhone 5. That just didn't make any sense to me. There was, the I amount actually of car- it was going to be the iPhone 4s. Huh? I I, no, I knew. I knew. <laughs> I knew that with i I knew that with iOS 5 that. Uh-huh. There was a damn good chance of like improving hardware, but that didn't that didn't mean that there was an, a, an iPhone five. I mean, I, I've I've been an owner of, uh, of the. Uh, the only uh, rumor I heard that was credible was the that, that that even was remotely believable, even though I was like ninety percent sure it was fake. Was the one we went over over here, which was the possibility that they were going to go with the design, which was basically putting a built-in case on the current one because. Yeah. You and I discussed that. I like that. Oh, that's the difference the one? But I, yeah, there was no way there was an iPhone. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, that, 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 that was what I was rubbing me about it. beta. Of course, you know, we can't say anything. The thing is, is that, I, you know, I'm not going to screw up my, my dev account and go out there and risk, uh, like, a lot of these Chinese-based or Russian-based videos to the world that are, like, showing you everything. Uh, uh, you know, I actually just finished uh, helping... Uh, the back end of, the, of, the, of an iPhone app that's about ready to launch for a, a, a very pretty big bank here in the south. So, you know, I can't jeopardize uh, my ties and stuff, and I will. I don't, you know, I don't lead. No, I, I wish you them. could have talked openly about lying because you ha- you had it, but you just like you said, you're under the confidentiality. You're not allowed to. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, it's like uh, I also had iOS five beta. I had both seats. You know, I had I had I kept getting they boy the day update iOS five beta. I mean, it's like I as a developer I can tell you, I got I got a lot of seats as they as they update um, as, as they went on. Um, I, 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 I think the comment you asked about yeah. everybody was like, oh, here comes iOS, iOS 4, um, the iOS 4S, or an iOS 4S, iPhone 4S. Disappointment. You know how many times it's been said about Apple product, product? They said it about the 3G, they said it about the, well, let's f- forget that. The iPhone was criticized, the 3G was criticized, the 3GS was criticized, the iPhone 4 was criticized, the iPhone 4S was criticized. What else what is there? Well, okay, in, in all fairness, the iPhone 4 deserved to be criticized. It kind of had an issue. <laughs> yeah. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh, that, that bar thing, I'm sorry, Scopus, that bar thing, and it's like I said in our, lab, in our Mac versus PC, it may not happen across the pond in Europe, 
all right? But the drop call syndrome started, I can't adapt so much for the original iPhone because I didn't own one personally, but although I, I, I borrowed a friend of the, the, 3G, the 3GS, holy crap, man. And, and I know that was factual problems because Apple, in the support forums and, and getting responses to me, made patches deliberately to try to correct dropped calls. The reason why I, Apple was targeted, I'll say it again, from the iPhone 4 is because the iPhone was known for having dropped calls previously. And it was misappropriated, if, if that's the correct word to use, because bars went away that it, that was the problem. No, you, you didn't have to have to have an outside attempt. The 3G and 3GS already were played with that same problem. And, and I couldn't reproduce the bars dropping as bad on, on the phones that I did in my video, but I do know that it's happened to some Samsungs that I've held. It's, and, and Apple's made plenty of videos proving that it can happen on other phones. But Apple was attacked because they had a history of what the hell, you know, uh, there's, there's drop calls problem. Now, there's always been this debate of, well, it's AT&T versus Apple. My argument that I've always concluded is that it's just Apple because I own AT&T smartphones that are, that are, that have been Android, um, and, and uh, other phones that don't drop calls. So, from, from my perspective and observations, the only conclusion that I can come up with is that, is that it's, it's, a, it's was an, maybe it's an Apple frequency problem and how it jumps from band to band because obviously it works in Europe's GSM bands and maybe they uh, there there have been US phones I think was it a Samsung or a Motorola I can't remember there was a Samsung or Motorola that had a, a lot of drop calls and the, and the drop calls were were stemming from GSM uh, switching to a, a different frequency when when something failed and I can't remember the exact specifics but it was plagued with this problem. And, and it had happened to me that that phone also sold overseas, you know, with the same uh, band setup. So um, I, I, I think that's my personal opinion uh, that I cite empirical evidence in and saying why they were jumped on so much of the iPhone 4. But the iPhone 4 was not the start of dropped calls and all this other nonsense. They, you know, the, 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 I remember one, the thing that I liked is when the iPhone 4 was leaked. There's a lot of Apple uh, supporters that said Apple would never design such a product. <laughs> I remember there was just like people coming out of the woodwork and it's ugly. Apple would never design such a product, and then all of a sudden that it, it becomes the real product. I'm like, oh, okay, you know, <laughs> that was kind of cool. And then, then all of a sudden, all those exact same people said, "Love it." <laughs> so I'm like, exactly. Well, it's like, hey, you know, pause, it, there pause, wasn't a. You pause, hey, wait, you got to pause the recording. I got to take care of yourself. Okay. <laughs> all right. Sorry about that. I had to take care of my voice. It's all right. When you have kids, man, especially three. I, 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 you know, I look forward to having that adventure someday. <laughs> <laughs> I'm scared to death. I'm gonna screw it up, but. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's, it's a, there's no book, but uh, as long as you love them and, and you do your best and your heart's in the right place and your mind and, and your and your and you know the difference between loving them versus wanting to be their best friend, you know, I think you'll be a good friend. Okay. Well, you know, the good, the, I mean, the main development, of course, was now Sprint gets iPhones. Um, they made a lot of money. I think that's an excellent move. I, I, well, I, I, I'm not so sure about that. Given how much they paid for that, I, I'm... Well, a lot of investors agree with you because the other stock dropped after they made a decision. And it's one of those. Uh... I, I think that, that it will pan out. Sprint is is in a very awkward position, guys. That Verizon is really known as the Android hub in the U.S. AT and T is still the dominant force for the iPhone. Uh, I personally, if I owned an iPhone, even if there is less drop calls on Verizon, would still opt for at and Reason being, is simultaneous data and voice is, is wow. Uh, that's a feature that is totally necessary for the things that I like to do that, that I grit 
my teeth get angry and sometimes just don't even pick up my phone, which is on Verizon because I can't have simultaneous data and voice on my palm free. Uh, and what's stupid about that is it's not a limitation of the technology, it's a limitation it's not, of Verizon's implementation of the technology. Okay, just, you know, Verizon can do this video, but they don't do it. It's so stupid. God. But um, yeah, Apple, I think, was just played with that antenna thing, I think is where I left off, because of the issue that they had. Um, and and it, it just was, was uh, even the most purest of fanboys and pundits would say, Jesus, man. I'm having too many freaking drop calls with the iPhone, and that's why I got hit so hard. Um, you know, now I hope I hope this alternating antenna works well. You know, maybe no, it, 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 I, honestly, given what you're saying about the play, I, I did not realize how bad this was until Tiny started complaining about his iPhone, and other people with iPhones started complaining. I'm like. Boy, I, 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 I just assumed it was Apple haters. I'm like, I, I don't like Apple, but I'm like, it can't be that bad. There's millions of people buying the stupid things. I'm like, I was like, okay. it's like, but it, no, it really was. It's just, I, mean, I know, it's like I said. Well, you know, you talk about the yeah, it's like, yeah. It, it, I, I, I wonder, it's times like that, I wonder, what is it with Apple people? You know, what's the like, Europeans laugh at us and say it's your network. No, it's not our network because I have smartphones that don't drop calls as frequently or anywhere near what the iPhone did. Now, the European bandwidth is higher than the US. I mean, Jesus, I have friends across a pond that blow blow my up. up well, up. in parts of Europe. It depends where you are, yeah. big time. Yeah. Because some, there's some places they're doing good to get dial-up speeds. You I know, yeah. it's yeah. <laughs> a lot portion of your man is just blowing us out of the freaking water in terms of, of what they have for their for their broadband. And um, a lot of their what would be the good word? Their consistency of their cell networks has to do with really the restrictions of the EU. The EU does not allow any other. Like CDMA has no chance of uh, essentially working in Europe because, I mean, the little laws that they set down and the way that providers work. I mean, essentially, the way I understand it, you buy an iPhone, you have to go through this master carrier, I think Voda, Vodafone or something, um, and then from there, you can pick whatever, wherever the hell you want to go in terms of... So well, and, and on the world oh, carrier, just, uh, on the world carrier things, I, I am glad Apple has finally used a Qualcomm set in there because... You know, there is no reason you should have to buy a separate iPhone for AT&T and Verizon. But the real question is, in the States, are they unlocked so you could take your AT&T iPhone to Verizon and Sprint and vice versa? Actually, uh, I think you can buy them unlocked. Okay. I know you can buy the iPhone 4 unlocked right now. Well, at least you could. I'm well, um, confused on that. Is, is the right. iPhone 4 have all the band chips in it? No, it doesn't. The 4S oh. is the first one to use the Qualcomm thing, so you can buy it unlocked. But the only, but that's okay. it, when, when they when they announced that, it was like, oh wow, so I could take my AT and T phone to T Mobile, and AT and T's buying T Mobile. What use is that to me? You know. <laughs> Wait, let me ask a question. I, I, I didn't mean iPhone 4. The iPhone 4S has a both CDMA and. Yeah. It's using a Qualcomm thing, so the same phone should work on both. Dude, do you realize what that implication is going to be? Yeah, right? You know what we're after this? You know what after this? We want CMA universal uh, uh, unlocking, essentially, in the United States. Mm -hmm. Which means this iPhone 4S could probably be the first to do it. Because if Sprint's on board, and Verizon's on board, and they're both CDMA, those effing companies cannot use the excuse of we don't accept their CMA ban. Because think about it. Well, that, and see, that's what I want to know. Is it, it? It's technically capable of it, but is it being sold that way? And there's already evidence that uh, Verizon is trying to be deliberately misleading because there's people who go to the Ver no, there's people who go to order it on the Verizon site. And they get this thing that goes, okay, do you want it unlocked for global warming? 
and it's like a thirty dollar a month plan or higher, so they don't get it, and so it's it's misleading about well, is it unlocked if I don't buy that plan, or is it not? It's like <laughs> so you're gonna have to pay a surcharge essentially if you want to be CDMA Universal. Well, no, see that that that's the part. CDMA Universal, that, you're gonna pay a that that's the part that we don't know. The, 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 uh, some people are saying no, 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 no. It's still unlocked, but that would be the plan you'd have to buy for it to work on Verizon's reciprocal networks. But it's yeah, it's it, it, right now it's not clear. We'll find out in the coming months. Uh, it, given the history of cell phones in the U.S., it wouldn't surprise me if there's some kind of locking layer on these things. You know. I know, and that's all artificial crap. I know. It, it, it's um, there. There have been some interesting issues uh, with the uh, iPhone um, uh, with I iOS five and the four S rollout. That that's one of the issues with the four S. It's an iCloud. It's an iCloud. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, can I interject real quick? Go, go ahead. Okay. Um, you asked about uh, whether or not it would be available unlocked. Uh -huh. uh, Apple's website says that in November they'll have a model that uh, that will come unlocked. Uh, okay, so if you so if you buy now, it's locked to your carrier. Yeah, you can only like you can only get one from a carrier right now. Well, well, I think they may be shipping the unlocked ones in November, so you may be able to pre-order unlocked one. I don't know, but right now it looks like you can only. Uh, or the president's going to carry a uh, Sprint or Verizon. What were you going to say, Mr. Benton? He's asking, what the, is the, is the, does it cost more or is it the same price? Of course it's yeah, 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 it subsidized. Not subsidized. Uh, right okay. now you can get the iPhone 4, uh, the iPhone 4 from Apple's website unlocked and it costs $549. Yeah, okay, yes, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, the, so, in the, so basically if you're an early adopter, you can't take advantage of the Qualcomm chipset. Yeah, Scopus, what we're after is well, CDMA Versal, which is CDMA Unlocked, which really doesn't take part in most of the world because an unlocked phone to the most of the world is like a GSM carrier that can go from the United States to uh, GSM. Uh, uh, so basically, GSM. Scopeless, there's but no CDMA reason you couldn't take your rich. Sprint. There, there's no reason you couldn't take your Motorola Droid from Verizon to Sprint and your right. Sprint Evo exactly. from uh, Sprint to Verizon, except for the fact that they database lock their things so you can right. only use a phone you bought from them. Right, right. and they give you bullshit excuses. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, don't, like, I don't know exactly like I don't know exactly. Like if I buy an iPhone, like if I buy the iPhone, I don't know if I like took it to Europe or whatever. If I'd be able to pop a SIM in. Uh, on the 4S, it should because it's Qualcomm. Yeah. Yeah. It'll work. It'll be fine. Yeah, I mean, even even a GSM thing. iPhone. It's like here. they may have updated yeah, the sure. 4 because the 4 now is 8 gigs, and it's available on AT and T, Sprint, and Verizon. But then again. Mm -hmm. They could just be selling two different phones. They are. They're selling two different models on the four. On the four, uh, on the four S, they've it, it's one model for all three that's carriers. Right. It's like yeah. one universal chip. Right? That makes more sense, you know, because that way they could just make one phone. Well, and, and they've had they've. Have they have had that chipset for a long time. It just tends not to work its way into the U.S. because of the right. Crap. That's right. And, and yeah. guess what? We How many videos have we discussed this where we, we actually hoped that Apple could be the spearhead to start that trend in the United States because they were big enough to start putting the pressure on carriers to say that enough is enough. I, I want that to be how every single cell phone is in the States. I know, uh, but just who, better, who better to have the power than Apple to start pushing back on these what, what would be That's even control. better uh, would be if Google finishes buying Moto and they both do it. They both say, "Screw you! You either Google get on." Google tried. Google tried, man. We know that. I mean, Google tried. They just didn't push it hard enough. But yeah, you know, I think Apple's got. The I know, honestly, for, for to make it stick in the U.S., I think it's going to take both of them doing it. It's going to take yeah. both of them doing it. Look, it's this way from now on. Your bullshit well, Google's ends. Google's going to say, "Here's our next." Phone that we are selling unlocked and be damned with anybody else, but they're gonna have to do a lot better in marketing it than they did with their freaking little Nexus thing. 
Oh, hey, Google did screw a lot of things up there. I'll admit that. They sure did. They did. They had no idea. It was like a lost child or a, you know, a lost dog looking for Google a does a lot of things great, but not being an engineer isn't one of them. <laughs> um, not being a salesman is one of them. They're an engineer. They just don't. It's like, yeah, here's my phone. Thank you. Take it. <laughs> um, I I hate to bring this up, but it's okay. relevant. Uh, wait, what what? Wait a Answer your question about the problems, you because your original we start address. You said the problems with iOS five and iCloud. I've always I still am very skeptical of iCloud. Apple has such such little experience with with back end cloud computing, and I hope it works. I am. Well, no, no, and, and that, that's actually the pro that was the problem I was going to talk about. When people, there, there's Apple's, Apple. Wait, hold on. A lot of the problems right now are from server overload. No, no, that's the thing. P uh, yesterday, um, the ser people, like, lost, there were people who couldn't use their iPhones at all because of <laughs> server overload upgrading to iOS 5. Like, right. it got it got halfway through, and then it, it couldn't talk to Apple's server, and the iPhone was bricked. <laughs> yeah, because it's like a half-firm. It's like a half-root. Uh, it's, like, it's like in Linux, if you're half-rooting, and you, you have to quit in the process, you're, you're, you're pretty much done unless you have a... I have a slave device to restart the process. Yeah, no, I mean, they, they can repair those phones by plugging them into iTunes yeah. and doing it the old-fashioned way, but until the server's back up, they can't do that. You know, it's... Yeah. But, no, I, you know, it, it was said that Apple chose Mac OS because it was slow. As their primary cloud backing, which I'm so shocked at because Google uses custom, Amazon uses custom, uh, Rim has custom. Uh, and, uh, there's something, th th there's a joke in there somewhere. Apple, Apple using Microsoft. <laughs> I tweeted it today. I don't know if someone saw that today. I, I tweeted it today. I was like, here we go. Let's play Microsoft. <laughs> Apple using Microsoft for a long time. Like, you know, in their retail establishment, they used to use Microsoft Easy Pay. Uh, they don't now, but yeah, they use Microsoft. Uh, hardware for a long time. Oh, I, I, I know, but yes. you know, to, you tell that to an Apple fanboy and they'll bite your head off. <laughs> so, well, I mean, I'm a fan of Apple. <laughs> no, I said fanboy. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Scope, yeah. you're actually being rather civil today and very <laughs> moderate. <laughs> hey, guys at Apple, if I guarantee you, if you ask just like Google and Amazon and make their own custom boxes. I guarantee it's going to happen. No, no, I, I, I guarantee you what Apple, I, I'm with you. They're going to do one of two things. They're either going to do a, a custom Linux thing or because they're Apple and they're kind of sad, they'll probably do something BSD based. Where, you know, they'll they'll take their old Apple, Apple. server stuff and, and, and yes. hybrid it with modern stuff and make a... That's my point. You don't, yeah, you don't play with Right. You don't get the way services like that. Am I talking over the No, but you're talking a little airy. <laughs> yeah, because I'm hearing your voice at the top. That is creepy. Anyway, um, Apple will, like I said, do a custom service because you cannot survive when you have that much of a load and that much need for services to your to your customer that will eventually get very specific that you won't make your own box like Google did. Because you you, you, you find it advantageous to say, man, we can cut corners here. And I, I, I cut corners is the wrong. Uh, become more efficient here and do this instead of this. Streamline would be a better right. word. Yeah, streamline. And then all of a sudden you have an entirely different server backend. And, and and you and I discussed this before when we were when I was praising Amazon's backend that that Amazon while it's great with its Kindle and it's starting now to broaden the Kindle's reach in its terms of services, already is like a master of all the enterprise backend because they've been doing it for years, which like is oblivious to most people. <laughs> you don't they even know about S3, EC2, and all this other stuff. They, they're like, what? Amazon did that? Really? You know? And, 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 and Apple kind of came from the perfection, the perfection of of selling consumer devices 
of course, that's going to make a lot of uh, people watching this video. Oh, here we go. Typical Apple. Look, I, they have if perfection is the wrong word to use. Damn good devices uh, that are are very client and distributed oriented that are now needing to be linked to a central service of which Apple is more behind the curve of providing. So there's well, and Apple needs desperately, if they want to stay relevant to the emerging uh, shift that's going on, to create something like that. Because they really need something like that to properly link uh, their devices in with their iTunes marketplace and get this symbiosis that everybody else kind of already has the ability to tap into. Mm -hmm. But Apple, Apple has all the pieces to, but they don't quite have the means to assemble them. And they actually have a, a pretty good, they could compete really good with that if they could just get the framework to put them together. <laughs> well, right now it's going to be a learning experience. I, every essential central cloud service that Apple has launched has essentially gone, uh, let's just say it's been a dud, essentially. And I, 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 I think I have a video even more of one of mine where I was skeptical of even iCloud's launch. And now, I'm not talking about the overload of the server, servers. We're going to see how this quote-unquote push and store work. I can't, that's one thing I'll say uh, about Jobs' vision is that he could he refused to word, use the word sync, even though he slipped up a little bit in the keynote. Uh, I know he didn't want to do it. He tried like hell to avoid using the word sync, even though that's what you're doing. I made a video about, I, th I have a whole video dedicated to iCloud versus Google because I do prefer Apple's philosophical view in dealing with it. And you and I have discussed this on other Mac versus PC videos in that I prefer native just node control versus central server control. And I prefer central server exactly. augmented by a hybrid. Yeah, you, exactly. <laughs> and, and Apple's taking a bigger challenge. Um, by absorbing that, because logistically speaking, centrally holding data is is a, is a safer bet. Um, pushing and uh, up syncing, I'm not going to follow Apple's mantra. Syncing to native devices uh, and, and and having less of a central control is an extremely challenging. That's why Google has really never pursued that avenue. Google has constantly maintained a central topology more than anything else. And because it is, a, it, is a, it is a freaking challenge. I am played with that as a programmer, man. I deal with, I'll give you an example, and I won't digress too far. If I get too far, just tell me shit. Um, I program for hospitals. Most people know that, and, as, uh, as well as banks. And, 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 but hospitals and health and, and, and behavioral health is one of my primary targets. Hospitals have multiple locations sometimes. And on my bigger clients. And syncing of that data, because a patient can go from hospital south to hospital north because of specialization or change of diagnosis, that that has to sync. And now I had to handle that. It could not legally be controlled centrally. Did I say that Cent centrally? Because of uh, HIPAA laws and all this other stuff. It had to be physically in a hospital's ownership presence. It was a massive task to figure out how to uh, handle the database backend activity in dealing with what would legally be declared ownership and with on-premises, and being able to make sure that even though the patient went to south and was front and, and originally started from north and they go back and forth again, that their data sinks properly, but the ownership of that data is legally in the correct uh, location. It was one of the most massive feats I've ever accomplished, period. Uh, and Apple essentially is doing that with most of its push and store, except for things in iTunes where it says, and it makes sense. It's like, dude, 
Now you're going to upload all your crap to, to the cloud if you've got all this music. We will just make you pay a little bit more to make a genuine copy in the cloud of the music you already own that you may have ripped from the CD. That does make sense on a logistic point of view. I, I, well, I, I don't. I, I understand why Apple's paying the green mail, but I don't like that they're paying it because there's really no reason to be paying for it again. And that's. It, it, I, I realize they don't want to fight that battle, but it's. Uh, I, I'm sorry. It's a sticking point for me that somehow. I, we're, we're, I, 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 will, I know. You and I are going to argue. I hate Central. No, 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 no. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the fact that they're that I, they're charging the extra money for that feature on the iTunes stuff they have because to they're stuff. paying the money, the extra money to the copy. And, and I'm I don't think they're under any legal obligation to do it. I understand why they're doing. They're going the path of least resistance. But I'm I'm annoyed with them for giving in to the path for least resistance because. If we let these people, they're going to keep us in the 1980s until 2285. <laughs> I disagree with that. Come on. Let's work through this decision process. I have online backups to like S3 Amazon. I, I think I've said that before. Do you know how long it takes for my computer, even with the amount of money that I'm paying AT&T for UVerse to get that crap to go as fast as I can to upload? It takes an enormous amount of time. Oh, no, no, M M Marcel, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm no, talking... But, but, but Apple chose a decision to say, well, people, are people going to upload to our servers? No, oh, no, you, you're oh. missing what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about the decision of where to store the data. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the fact that they're paying copyright holders more money for something they've already sold. Then that's that's not Apple's problem. No, that's, no, but a, a, Apple Apple chose to make that decision. Amazon uh, chose the decision. Uh, we are under no legal right to pay you for the same thing ta twice. Screw you. Uh, and, and Apple took no, the. Apple's not making you pay twice. That, actually, I, unit for unit, Apple is not making you pay twice. What Apple's doing is they've charged they've charged a flat fee. For conversion of your songs, you are not actually legally paying unit per unit. No, I, I know I know that, but the thing is, Amazon is not char Apple's charging an extra fee, uh, and it is a flat fee because they made an agreement with okay. the copy right. with right. the copyright holders to basically go, okay, we're going to license the ability to use something we're actually already licensing. Wait a minute. Uh, Let's, let's discuss this. Which Amazon devices are storing music locally and having to worry about the cloud? Other than that, that Amazon is all about buffering and keeping and keeping your service linked to their central... I, I'm referring to the streaming thing that Apple's offering now. Just, then you just killed your own You just said streaming. Streaming is about a central process coming out. Apple is dealing with a local node variable stored on a device, not stream, owned as a property, and saying that is your property. Yes. That option, it can be uploaded in the, the amount of gigs that you may have, or I can charge you a flat service fee for replicating that in the cloud for you. Amazon is not doing that. You just killed that with streaming. Streaming is a pushing service in a packet-per-packet basis. What I'm referring to is the fact that the app, Apple is paying... Okay, I, I buy something on iTunes. I download it. It's on my local Mac or iPod or whatever. Right. Right. What Apple services you're at, it isn't streaming. What they do is they know what songs I bought from iTunes. Mm -hmm. So all of everything I bought, because they also have it on their server anyways, they're going to replicate it, you know, and that's what they're doing. It's action, you don't have to do it. For instance, I have, and I'm not. Okay. Well, no, 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 no. Mark, Mark. I have, I don't know. I have about. I, okay, my my iTunes is about twenty gigs large in music. Um. So so. What I'm referring to is 
Apple already has the le already had the legal right to do that under their license agreement. They did not. Yep. They did not. I disagree. They did not. They did, you and I argue this all the time because we're against it on how these freaking content providers come after us and say, oh, well, this is a new avenue that we didn't foresee, and we don't want you to have this fair use of our copy, even though in the old days we could copy cassette tapes to our heart content without anybody bitching. You and I already know this. You're arguing against yourself. We freaking discuss this in many in many Macros PC videos and iWork videos where we're saying the content providers are shoving it up you know, you know where, and, and, and that, and 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 okay. Now you're getting what I'm, what I'm, what I'm annoyed at. I'm annoyed that Apple is playing nice with them. I understand why they are because it's the path of least resistance. But everybody else, aside from Apple, is telling them. Beep. <laughs> well, Amazon's not saying eat or anything. Amazon and Google have said that central services and streaming the play. Well, it's not challenging that license. You know what? It, it's like, I prefer Apple's model because that, they may be cake, uh, acquiescing to the content providers and doing that. But you know what, it's not going to last. Because remember, iTunes started out at, at DRM and Apple was part of the war fighting being DRM free. Even though they were slower in freeing up iTunes, that made sense because they were a larger platform versus Amazon, who was DRM free before Apple was. But Apple was definitely part of the of the movement to say we need to, you know consumers are are, are are bitching about this and well, we need to do something about this. Apple, as the middleman, has to satisfy us as the customers who don't give a crap most of us about the logistics and how we want to get our music and, and, and movies and content. We just want it to happen, and so Apple can either hurt that or play the game and be powerful enough to continue to lobby as they have done. Alright? And I know where you are and, you, and I agree with you on principle that as a business... But you disagree Apple, with me in actual. <laughs> yeah, because in business I would make the same decisions because I as a business and assess my customers I can't make it an entire principle argument because then I would hurt my... Like I said, I understand the argument from a business standpoint but... I, I I have done, and I'm a businessman, and I, I have I've had things come in front of me where I'm like, okay, from the business standpoint, this is fun, but I can't look myself in the freaking mirror if I do that. So it's like, uh, it's like well, what about you, Scope? Where I, I I don't even know where you sit on this. I, it, me and Marcel are never gonna <laughs> agree, but in both positions are valid because, like he's saying, business wise, it makes the most sense, and it is the passive least resistance. Oh, I wasn't really paying <laughs> sorry. Uh, you know, uh, from what I could, like, from what I could gather, uh, you know, the, you know, the dealings there are kind of, I don't know, that they're, they're not really, you know, they're not really in my area of expertise. So I leave it up to you guys to settle the argument. <laughs> <laughs> Well, okay. Comments below. <laughs> it's like <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll let the we'll let the viewers argue it out. <laughs> Mark my words. Google will eventually adopt the node storage model because I am foreseeing that there's a net, that's what the whole the whole net neutrality is in principle. In the end, is defining property. Mm-hmm. And I guarantee you, everything, because of the way the law will play out, will become decentralized. And I have, thank God, because... No, it, no, I, I have said this at least a dozen times this year, so what's the 13th? Um, if we don't become decentralized in our handling of data, we cannot handle the growth rate. We have to. Not even that. Not even that. You blur what is property and what is not property. And then you give what we were discussing in Mac versus PC, these idiot ISPs and blocks that can, that can decide, oh, if you're, a, if you're a pirate or not, but they can just simply, on the, on the supply side of things, shut you out. Think of the power 
that that kind of policy has when things are centrally controlled. Well, and you know what's really sad about that is there's no constitutional conflict because it's a private entity beyond the control of the government. That's right, because they have elected to do it. That's correct. You're right. <laughs> Which is a really scary reality, actually, when you think about it. That's <laughs> we watch my, my video about uh, iPod versus Google. It's not about all Apple, you know, fanboys in the head. It's think about the structure and topology, and that's what I'm getting at. But the reason why I come from this position is, guess what? I programmed for application service providers in the, in the freaking 90s before all of this crap is prevalent for this. I've dealt with application service providers and where data should be stored. I've lived it, breathed it, hated it, lost sleep. Don't you feel warm and fuzzy that we're trying to go back to it? <laughs> I know. It's like, I've lived this crap. It's, you know, one of the things I, I, you know, that's part of the thing when, when I got into Mac versus PC, like, holy crap. It's, it's, it's like, oh, yes, a lot of things, and that's why a lot of people who are anti Apple is like, yeah, this is nothing new. It's true. A lot of things are. Well, cars are repackaged and resold, and technology comes and goes and is repackaged 10 years later and it's sold to something new. Who gives a crap? That's the way, the way of things. But I, when it comes to property and legal, because that is really an essential principle that we do argue what is ours? What is our music? What is our movie? How far is digital rights management going to interfere or dictate what is my property? And, and that stems a lot from what I'm very passionate about because I've been there, I've done that, I've written, and I'm still effing coding for crap with that stuff. And I very much admire Apple's position and what it wants to do. And even to the point of where they say photos, you know, it's like it's all temporary. It's like, we want the data to reside on our node variables, not in the central cloud. We will hold it temporarily. This is a finite resource. This is a limited storage, a limited time presence. Understand, it is your content. We want it to make your content because we understand you have more than one device seem seamless to you. So that if you are on your Mac OS 10, Mac Pro, to your iPhone that it is well and, and, and setting the legal ramifications aside and, and the ethics and everything aside I have to agree with you at some point anybody who's providing services like that might be forced by the ISPs to adopt that model and I say that because if bandwidth caps get more ridiculous people will not be able to afford the double bandwidth usage there you go and that was my video about will tablets uh, what was it? I think it was like, well, tablets in this, hit a wall, meaning that we are running into, at least in the U.S., bandwidth limitations. Australia has some pretty strict ones, too. Yeah. We're running into these, 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 uh, I, let's just, I'm going to say it's artificial because I don't buy entirely the telecom's argument, although I understand their argument. Uh, I don't buy all of it. And that, of course, their position is to exaggerate to make their bottom line. Oh, yeah, larger. of course. Yeah, yeah. So the thing of it is, is that we are, in this country, going to run into where not everything can run in the cloud. And, 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 and Google is going to have to come to terms with that. They're going, everybody who wants to run... Well, I, 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 I get the argument that the pipe's only so big, but that's one of the reasons I don't understand putting the meter caps on, because you're dis... You're, you're dissing, you're, decur you're uh, discouraging decentralizing it and spreading the bandwidth out more evenly and yada yada. You're, you're creating single point failure nodes. You're, you're actually making the problem worse with the caps. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and, 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 not even, and we're still below, aren't we below 50%? Still that, that it depends where you are. In the more densely populated areas, it's between 50 and 75. Yeah, but, but, but as a nation as a whole, we're not, we're not like super high. No. Just think about that in the future. When we get super high in terms of user usage for broadband and how slow the upgrading of networks are in the United States, <laughs> just get ready for what is going to be defined as digital property and 
I'm just warning everybody in the United States, not so much in Europe, but in the United States. Well, that, 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 that's why I'm so concerned about it, because it's not that far off. It, it, it really is, like, just around the corner. It's not... It's, I, I mean, I have... I, I have... Good Lord. I, you know, I, I guess my age reflects it. What was it? You know, it, when we used to hide our uh, Ma Bell to come over here and, and, and hardwire a line so I can get faster internet, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's where we are now. It, all we do is repackage and do frame relays on bursts, and our topology is very slowly, exponentially growing versus the users that get on it, i.e., why telecom spiked back with data caps and the way they've changed their data models saying, well, the average user only uses this much, so we're going to change that. I don't care what the average user uses today. I'm thinking about three, five years from now when they're going to use eight times that much. Because they're contradicting themselves. If it actually were the average usage for that, they wouldn't need to change the plan because it would be just as profitable. Right? No, and that, and that, that, that's the thing. Like you're saying, if, if, if that's the average usage, then why do you need the cap? Because that means the average person's not using more than that. It's like, <laughs> yeah, I agree. It's stretching them, and, and, and you're making tons of profit, which is not the case, because then that would mean that the, com the company's being stupid, because their point is to make as much profit as possible, which tells me that they're in trouble with their topology, which we've discussed on the videos. And, and, and we are in a serious crossroads with the more people that participate on the U.S. networks. And it, it tends to be that the U.S. dictates software policy a lot for the rest of the world. And it's going to be interesting to see. And that's why I say we're going to come down to a legal showdown on distributed versus central processing. Google will come to terms with Let's, let's go distributed, but central is not the way. We used to be central. That's what we called token ring. You know, we called token ring that crap. So yes, I, I remember my CCNA. <laughs> yes. Yeah. We, we, we distributed for a freaking reason, you know. It, it's nice to have many computers in central processing and central storage, but no. We have distributed computing for a reason. We also have music digitally, movies digitally, an operating system in front of me digitally, downloading of games digitally, and very explicit property ownership of those. Uh, what would be the correct word to you? I, I mean, uh, bits, packets. Because it's not, you know, I, I know that people tend to argue hard products versus software, but that would go against Stallman's thing, you know. Yeah. That's why I kind of delicately say this, you know, the people with the open. The thing of it is, is that where I, where I do disagree with that open source movement is that when I acquire something and it becomes my property, which has to do with net neutrality, in the end, ownership has to exist at some point. And the line in, in that deportation has to say, this is mine, and this is something that is centrally controlled that is open to policy and manipulation. And how much of that we are willing to give up comes into question. And I, and I guarantee Well, and, and the thing that's going to be really interesting is um, if we go fully distributed, you know, you can go too far. Uh, this is like something office complexes complain about. Um, but it, unless you're in an office complex, you don't have to deal with this problem. But people get what I call spam faxes. They have the fax machine up, people fax it ads, it wastes their electricity, their paper, their ink, they don't want it, there's not really a good way to block it, it's, it, it, it's, it's one of the few, you know, the, the fax machine just gets possessed and starts printing ads, um, because somebody has spammed it. Um, that is something that will come into account, like you're saying, ownership and yada yada, because if we go completely distributed, and everything is based on distributed and peer-to-peer and, -peer and everything, then that means... Uh, no, wait a minute. There's a difference between being distributed and peer-to-peer. Peer-to-peer -peer is a protocol for distribution. No, I know, but what I, I'm talking I mean, about taking... Flat is a protocol for 
distribution. What, I, what I'm saying is we will. We, no, there is no argument there. If distributive, in, my, in the context that I'm talking about, is what is your property and what is not your property. Well, but that's I don't the... think that anybody would argue that there should be a forgiveness of it. There shouldn't be, we should not let go of any of it. After all, the open source movement is about making all code open because it's open knowledge. It's like a scientific mathematical equation. No, I, and, I, and I agree with that, bit, but what I was getting at, if we truly become, if we go to the extreme of a distributed thing... I we're at, an extreme. I find that insulting. Property is property. No, 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 no. Let me make my statement and then you'll know what I'm getting at. Um, if we go to the extreme where every single node on the network is part of the distribution, then that means technically the act of being online would mean you're not just a uh, part of the relay system, but you're also contributing your electricity, the spin cycles on your hardware, well, and, and, and so on. It's a that's actually, the, the pipe is what you're discussing is not owned. And that's the property of that would be that is a national monopoly, and the municipalities have control over that. Right. But so the packets can be charged a service for a lease of transfer, which we do anyway right now, right. essentially. But when it comes to the definition of what is mine and what is not, we'll be extremely clear. What you're getting into is is the actual medium for which it's transported. Yeah. I drop my car, and I'll answer that question. I drop my car. On the tollway here, I, <laughs> oh, yeah. I pay taxes from the road. It's supposed to be over I hate toll roads. But nobody, nobody can take my car away from me because it's my my property. Even though I use the conduit to get from point A to point B, it doesn't change the description of my property, does it? Not. No, it shouldn't. Okay, getting back under the topic of Apple. We can ask Stoplitz now. Stoplitz is away. I'm still awake. <laughs> I'm not listening to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we go off on some tangents now and then. Both me and Marcel are pretty passionate about this stuff. <laughs> I mean, I'm totally in Apple's camp when it comes to a cloud topology. You understand what I'm saying? I'm backing my whole video. I, I know you've watched it, where I said iCloud versus Google. It's all about that topology and that Apple iCloud versus Google? Yeah. Uh, I no, I haven't it. seen the video, but I'll watch it. Um, I said commented on it. I have, I have uh, YouTube open right here. So. Yeah, my iCloud versus Google speaks about the topologies of, of Google and Apple and how I love Apple, even though I don't have much faith in Apple's deployment. <laughs> Do as Apple. In other words, Marcel says, "Do as Apple says, not as Apple does." <laughs> the, the reverse of the classic argument. You know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, for the most, I, like the most, I, like the most, I, um, like the most, I um, like most I've really, uh, you know, kept up with uh, concerning. You know, I've never really been a fan of cloud computing, uh, computing myself. Um, you know, but I did actually watch a, um, you know, I did actually watch a uh, keynote that Steve Jobs did back in 97, early in the day, where he Yeah, I know you're talking about where he was interim CEO, man. Yeah. Yeah, I know in the video you're talking about, no, 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 he was not inter interim CEO yet. You, the, the yeah, he was talking CEO about when he was, was talking about the Mac app, And he was talking about, uh, you know, he was talking about, uh, you know, essentially, uh, you know, how he has, uh, you know, how he uses uh, cloud computing uh, to, 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 like, uh, use his data between, like, you know, use his information between his computer at Next, his computer at Pixar, his computer at Apple. Right. I, I know. It was the, it was the one where he it. was just an advisor and he kept saying, it's not my decision. Is that the keynote you're talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. Like, yeah, you know, people ask him questions about some things and yeah. Yeah, some of his responses were well you know that's not really my decision you know I'll that's try that's to right, have yeah. a talk exactly. with somebody about it whatever but at the end of the day I'm just an advisor and stuff like that that's right yeah okay um no but what you know it, it, the thing of it is is that 
we don't, we don't have to be a fan of cloud computing or even know much about it. What we do need to be concerned about is where our property starts and ends. And I, that's something that I saw and I, I did a video on it, I appreciate it about Apple. If they said that's your damn song, that's your freaking movie, and that's your freaking photos. And we are only, our cloud is a temporary repository to facilitate a syncing to make right. all of your devices look like it's one device. Right. And, and, and that is why I admire Apple's direction. Apple's okay. nascency in understanding the cloud is where I, I, my video also states, I, you know, I hope they can execute it well. Apple you know, has, a, has a big challenge, you know, they have been in this game for, for, for as long as it's competitive. But they will learn. And Apple has all the cash in the world to pay for mistakes it makes and correct them. And I, that's why I state that Apple will probably yeah, come For now, we'll, we'll see how long that cash holds. Dude, come on, man. Oh, here's my, you know what, wait a minute. Let's stop everything. Everybody who watches this who doesn't like Apple, let me ask you a question. Why do you want Apple to fail anyway? What? I mean, Apple in its current position is not even number one in the cell market, well, right? It's okay, the it's number, the almond. I, well, yeah, hold I on, think. hold on. It's number one in tablets, and that's not going to last forever. Why do you want, everybody who's against Apple who's going to watch this, why do you want it to fail? Why do you want to? Why do you want to say, "See, I told you so"? The way I look at, it, at my perspective is that I want them to remain strong, and I want Google to remain strong. Don't we all want the availability of constant aggression to to better technology, even if the ideology is diametrically opposed? That's a free. Uh, I. I, I, I I don't, okay, what I want is, for lack of a better word, an, an anti-Apple to counter Apple, if that makes any sense at all. And I have that. Google's already got a larger market share than freaking uh, the iPhone does. I mean, well, okay. no, no, that, that's in the mobile arena, but the, in all arenas. There, there isn't an anti-Apple in every arena. Well, what, what arena, what arena is left? Because, please... The PCs are still dominated by Windows. I mean, I don't want to say desktops are still dominated by Windows by a huge margin. Mobile devices, Android's over, already overtaken iOS. The only market that essentially device uh, is the iPad, which is tablets, which is going to is going to come down to a plateau. Um, Seeing know, what happened to the designs that. of certain hardware in reaction to the Apple effect. Uh, what, I'm not wait, happy. Restate, just said, wait, wait, wait. Restate what you just said. You said reaction. <sighs> there's, there's a counter reaction to the Apple effect that the industry tends to have, in which um, some competitors, because they don't have the kahunis to cater to their target demographics, instead try and chase other demographics. And well, I don't blame Apple for that. See, because you, your first part of the statement, I agree with. We want an anti-Apple contingent. But yeah. If Apple fails, we won't have an anti-Apple contingent, which means my options have just dwindled. So what you're saying is that you're really bitching about the people who don't have as much innovation. No, I'm not saying the lack. Of, what I'm bitching about is. Well, no, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Your statement is. That they're making decisions based upon Apple's movements within the market, which means that they are subservient to decisions of Apple. Which means that you're really complaining at those at those companies and saying, "Grow some fucking balls, you know, put some fucking hair on your chest, and and let's let's get to it." It's not Apple's fault that those other CEOs are fired for not for disagreeing with the following tablet movement. That is those companies' idiotic maneuver. That's what I say in my videos on Twitter. Let Apple do its own thing, okay? Read the market a little bit better. Why, why would a company rush 
and exhaust a tremendous amount of resources to make a device that is still very new to the consumer. Why do you want to rush and make a device that is not quite have its identity? Because it has Apple magic. <laughs> it's, an e it's a gaming thing. It does all. Why? Hold off a little bit. You know, let's let's and, and the, the people don't understand. Then the tablet response of other companies was even within an eight month. Uh, 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 well, <laughs> you're the one putting words in my mouth that I want Apple to fail. I think what I want to fail more. I didn't. I didn't, I didn't I, no, I did not put words in your mouth. I said people watching, but I countered your argument because you made it very explicit in saying that companies react to an Apple decision. And I'm saying that is not Apple's fault, but those companies. And, and what I also stated to you was that by what you're trying to say is that I don't want Apple to be in that position, which, which would mean that you're saying, I want Apple to be to the point where other companies don't make that decision, which would mean that they are not producing something significant to garner competition, of which I would disagree with you. And that's what I'm trying to say. On both ends of where your argument is leading, I don't want that stop what it's doing. I don't want the press to stop what it's doing. It's it, Every company needs to keep on other companies' toes to remain competitive. Or we're going to end up into a very slow snap move. Well, no, and I don't disagree with you, but part of what triggers that is, unfortunately, it's less Apple and it's more the Apple fanboys. Okay. <laughs> oh, well, now you're on an emotional wow. Well, no, 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 no I, but... I to like what Marcel to what Marcel was pointing out that it's it's an indirect reaction to Apple which I guess he's technically right technically isn't Apple's fault and it has more to do with the fact that we don't have at the, uh, we, we used to uh, about I'd say back in like 0304 we had some some anti apples unfortunately if I had if I had to go look for the anti-Apple in today's industry, unfortunately, it doesn't exist. Uh, and well, I just Android and Amazon. Amazon is the biggest competitor to Apple. Apple has been competitive with Apple for a long time. It's just that they haven't been able to get the market share that they need to be able to get the market share that they need to be able to get the market share that they need to be able to get the market share that they need to be able to get the market share that they need to be able to get the market share that they need to be able to get the market share that they is the quintessential competition in terms of content against Apple. They have the music, they have the movies, they have the books, and they're making the devices. Oh, hell no. Amazon is a direct competitor to Apple. Android we'll, we'll, we'll is not in there. <laughs> Android I'm is not in there, my friend. <laughs> no, Rim, wait, wait, no, Rim will be. But Rim has no content. Rim made the mistake of, of trying to follow Apple 
when their demographics are not Apple consumers. RIM's consumer is the enterprise. No, RIM's consumer is diehard enterprise, and I exactly. have never understood why WIM is trying to turn into know, an I iOS know. Android yeah. competitor because it's like, RIM, do you realize that the people who are using Blackberries are the people who don't care if they need four phones to have a Blackberry? They, they want their Blackberry, and if you turn your Blackberry into an iPhone, they're not going to want their Blackberry anymore. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, but everybody's doing it, and Blackberry wants to be cool. Well, but see, so that goes right back to what I was saying. It's have the balls not to do the same thing as everybody else. Okay, then don't yeah, say that. Well, that's that. what he does. Yeah. That's what he came on board. <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah, they should, um, like, like Blackberry, like, well, Rim should remember Rim is if they want to survive because they're not doing They will. Rim is in a unique and position, we, like I said. And every, yeah. every cycle comes in. When Microsoft fell from grace essentially. It's not that they fell from grace, it's just... It's that they started going, what would Bill do? <laughs> no, 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 no. Apple will hit this moment in the future. Apple again will hit this moment in the future. But you get to be in a certain logistical cycle where it becomes too costly to start changing as rapidly as you need to. Okay? It just, it simply costs more money to make changes than your competition. And when that happens, that is a natural business cycle that we all have to come to terms with. It will happen to Apple again, like it did in the past. It happens to Microsoft, and it's happening to Rip. You get to a point to where it is too costly to make the change based upon your current demographic. And in doing so, hurts you. And so it becomes a painful process to finally make that line in the sand to make that change that is actually necessary to continue on. Well, and going back to your question, I think I can sum it up best by quoting uh, the shadows from Babylon 5. I think it's time to go Dad, pick. Dad, use my show. Use my own favorite show. How dare you? <laughs> I think it's time to go kick over all the anthills. <laughs> I'm going to think you better be extremely careful. You are on seat. You are you are on egg shell. You are on top of the ground. You already know that last night is the end of the world. I am I, I, I'm going to be quiet here. You better say it very, very intelligently. <laughs> I already said the one I was going to say. Remember when they were explaining what they do? You know, it's like the shadows, they're, what they basically do is stir up the conflict and go kick over all the anthills and get everybody stirred up again. I almost think the industry needs that to happen right now. Okay, okay, okay. It's, like, it's, it, it's time for all the anthills to get kicked over and, you know, reshuffled. And it, it, I'm sorry, it's time. We've kind of gotten complacent. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, getting back to the last thing on Apple, Siri. <laughs> I like it. You like it? I don't know. I, I think I'm dead talking about Apple. I don't know. I like it. It, 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 it. It's honestly going to be one of those love-hate things, and the real thing with is going to be, can you shut Siri up? <laughs> uh, for, people who, for people who don't want Siri to talk back to them. The other thing, though, what I was really going to get on here, what do we think about the fact that, I mean, Apple bought Siri, and there's a Siri app for older iOS. Right. What do we think about the fact that they've basically turned that off? It's going to work for a little bit longer, uh, but it's, I forget the exact date. Not a, uh, like, I'm not a fan of that move. Um, personally, I think that they should not have um, like, personally, I think uh, integrate Siri for 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 for, for iOS on the on the older devices. Like like all you like all you should need should be. Well, it, it, it's device. it's already there as an app, but they've turned the app off, or, or they're going to. Where if you're not on one of the well, iPhones that can upgrade to iOS five, you're going to yeah. lose Siri. Yeah. Well, wait a minute. But there's a reason they already paid for it or whatever they should. Well, they're not going to keep charging them. They're, it's just it's going to go away. It's no. 
Look, there's a reason for that, and, and it's quite frankly, I mean, I actually, what, what all of this is, what Siri is, is software agents, essentially. Yeah. And, and, and Apple did that long ago. That's very old style Apple Classic, and, and back in the day, 95, Microsoft was doing it as well. I, I protect well, well, software well, agents. Well, Siri actually is supposed to be a little bit more than just the um, well, and, and that and well, that's no, it, no, it, no. It is a software agent. The thing of it is, is that technology has made it has made it easier for an easier human interaction with it than versus like the very boring. The essential power of Siri is still very much the software agent. The fun and the gimmick of it is what technology has afforded us to do now with its responses and like. 43 seconds so I self-destruct and shit like that. But but the very power of Siri will come to play like like it is very much an Android already in terms of services rendered, which is a lot of it is back-end uh, software agents doing tasks for us intelligently uh, from a simple voice command. And because a lot of us will say we're in our car, we want something done, uh, it, it will actually get Siri will actually get much more complex for things that we want. Even when, even for like enterprise level stuff. Let's say that I want to even do a simple database query. I uh, take the word simple out of that. If I want to do a database query across multiple uh, multiple databases, span across. Say so I'm one company. Span, I have a database with unique data in Japan, in the United States, and whatsoever. Is that I can assign my software agent. Uh, on, on that voice command to um, utilize its backend services, which which Apple is like starting to do so with its iCloud and all that, to tap into those resources to make what I can ask it much more complex than saying set a task, do this. What we will demand of it is going to be a hell of a lot more than the, the gimmicky stuff that we see now. It is the, the common well, uh, and I agree with that, Marcel. But it, it, I mean, okay. But to, to how, why does that mean they have to turn the old version off? Why couldn't they just mean to get the new version? To get the new version, you have to upgrade. But so the old version will not be upgraded anymore. Why do they have to kill the old version? You know the answer to that. You know the answer to that. I mean, come on. As developer, <laughs> they want the, they want the to be too costly. Too to be Yeah, it, it, yeah. It, at the end of the day, it, it's it, it, I, I I understand where Marcel is arguing for, and I agree. A year, uh, six months to a year down the road, that could be valid. But right now, it's yeah, about right now, it's about selling the next phone. It's all right. Look, Apple, Apple is not hurting for sales, and Apple's policy has never really been one where Microsoft is more lenient for legacy. Apple actually has very little mercy for legacy, although. Apple is not the worst company to shut off legacy. Apple's got a pretty, a pretty medium-sized record for maintaining legacy, but they're not a Microsoft. Legacy. And the opportunity cost plus the price. There's that word again. <laughs> uh, yep, that's true because it's true. It's a trade-off because what it costs you now to maintain that legacy, you've got to make the decision and say, "Dude, man." Why do I want to make? Why do I want to maintain this archaic crap and put into something that's going to actually create bugs and make things more complex for a software that can make it so much easier if they were just adopt? And you go through that as a programmer yourself, so you cannot argue with that. But that's just Apple has an embarkation line of saying, "Here's where I draw the line in the sand." Microsoft is a little bit further back. But you know what? Microsoft is actually shortening and shortening that line because it does become cost prohibitive to keep people enough, to keep people uh, that many. Uh, that many I, I'm just I'm hoping Microsoft stays on NT6 for a while. <laughs> oh, well. We'll see. <laughs> Windows 8, Windows 8 is not changing the NT. Um, no, I know. Not, it, Windows 8, it, Windows 8 is a, a simple UI implementation. Their kernel, they can't. They, Microsoft learned a lot 
and they're keeping a lot of dinner things the same, and that's fine, that, because that's the meat of keeping things succinct, uh, working, and um, UI implementations are a lot more generous in terms of what you can get away with versus the back end. And that was the biggest problem with the experience with Vista was so much back end changes in root core changes. Uh, I, I agree. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like, I, I, I still wish they hadn't, or, or that there was a way to, it, it, because, I mean, everybody isn't going to want to or be able to go to iOS 5 that can run Siri. I mean, they, would it have, I, 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 I hear what you're saying, but would it have been that hard to just allow updates to Siri then, independent of iOS 5? It's not so much that, it's like, do I want to update a software onto Siri that already has a sandbox model? Siri is already implemented. Do I, why do I want to have extra code, extra parallel processing on the iPhone that will drain more battery to suffice legacy? That's the, that's the conundrum you have to come to terms with. Well, I have a hard time having, even though your, your argument's valid, I have a hard time having sympathy for it because that's something that's been caused by Apple's limitations of iOS. No, I wouldn't agree with it. that. That's not a limitation I would agree with. That, that, that's literally a changing of a model. But m Microsoft is going to start pissing you off too. And actually, oh, Microsoft's so, already pissed me off. Yeah, I've seen so Windows will, 8. So will Linux. But you don't like Windows 8? No, he's a Linux. He's a, he's a KDE. But believe me, Believe me, as KDE, uh, well, that that's actually probably going to be a long battle, to be honest with you. <laughs> KDE. But let's just say the underpinnings of Linux, and as it gets more and more and more so. Uh, oh, no, no, I, I agree with you. I honestly think Linux is going to go through a lot of forking in terms of that stuff in the next two to three years, because it's kind of hit that point where it's beginning the transition from the hippy-dippy open to... Actually yeah, making it's I mean, the way to do it. I guarantee you, your versions are in your program. You're like, what the hell am I I'm sorry. Get, look, shit has to move on to a certain point, man. I know. You can't keep, you can't keep your turds floating in the toilet without flushing. Oh no, no. The the whole open versus free is going to really heat up in the next few years. No, I of, think open can stay open. And, and free, but no, no, they're, 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 you're, you're not a Linux user, so you're not as a, but there's this rub between uh, Linux OS's growing up to become something as versatile out of the box for an average user and wow. the elitism of no wow. pure open source, nothing, no making things easy for people, pure. Pure. It's like, and, uh, well, those guys won't play out. Those guys won't play out. But, 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 uh, but that doesn't define openness. Openness is if, if the code is really open to to the masses, which it will always be uh, under under current licensing, unless they change the licensing. What you're discussing is it, it, it's the conflict of if anything not open can be allowed to play with open. And that's that's a rub in there. It's and I'm sure. sorry, the entire industry, why in a utopian world would be purely open. There's going to be a transitional period where open's going to have to play with not open and and just to get things done. And isn't that not the Stallman argument of saying there are two forks? Didn't, didn't did he not? I, I it was Stallman. He basically said there are two directions of which. Open is going. Yeah. The, the true open, which is his, and the open, which is pragmatic for business. Exactly, and and that fork is getting really heated as things mature. Sure. Because I mean, it, it, there, there there's the people who are finding the middle ground to move forward, and there's the people who don't. No, you have to join me over here, or I can't play with you. That's mm -hmm. that's and it, it it's a fork. It's a big one. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Anything else, so Apple? Uh, we're getting to conclude, man. We've really gone. Yeah, I know. We're at two hours. We need to, right. yeah. So, I... I and, that, and that comes back to great people. Like, I, I do also have great respect for Stalin. We need people like Stalin. We need people like Jobs, Gates. Uh, they all contribute in their own way. 
Yeah. They all contribute. And and Jobs' death is a great loss. And, and among others that will also, uh, we will lose uh, from, from these limitations of life that we hope that new uh, people will be able to come up and contribute their own and become as significant and are willing to take that much responsibility and liability, criticism and praise all simultaneously and uh, help us move along technologically. We can only hope. <laughs> all right. Peace out, all. Bye. <laughs> right. Yeah. I'll see you guys later. Yeah. <laughs>